it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, we have another good one today and of course this one is super simple. You probably have lots of the things already needed to create a bokeh background. Now I have done this, a video on this in the past and it was really popular and I was actually looking back through it and thought, why don't I do that more often? So I'm going to be creating some bokeh backgrounds today and turning them into cards for you. Now, just as my background, I am going to make my own backgrounds, but of course you can use something that you have made previously, or you can just use pattern paper. So I'm going to be starting out with some watercolor paints today, and boy is this not fancy watercoloring. I am using some watercolor paper. This is the Tim Holtz watercolor paper, and I am using my Prima watercolors. I love this little set. It's nice and compact for me and good to go. I am just simply adding some color down. I have popped a little bit of water. I spray my paper first with a water and then I just add down color. It's very, very simple and no rhyme or reason. This one I added blues and greens, but it kind of ends up being more blues. Uh, if there's any kind of big splotches that you don't want, then add more water, spread it around. I don't know. You can use whatever you like to do this. It doesn't have to be watercolors. If you use something like oxides or just normal distress inks, remember that that is going to react later on when we add more inks and things. But I did my last background using oxides and it works perfectly. The darker the background, kind of the better, because obviously we are going to be adding some white on top of this, the bokeh out of focus kind of background. And so you want to have as much color in the background as you kind of can. It doesn't have to be super dark, but you can see here, even when I add like this big kind of hunk of blue on there and it doesn't even end up getting kind of mixed in all the way you can still see my brush strokes and everything I promise this one is going to make a gorgeous background because we are going to make this one into a card in a minute too so it doesn't have to be perfect okay so whatever you have make sure there is a decent amount of pigment or ink on the background let these completely dry and then this is where I'm going to make my own stencil I like these Hero Arts acetate sheets. Down the bottom there you can see it says works well with metal dies. Some acetate will cut really nicely and some will not. Uh, don't particularly ask me why, but when I found a good one I tend to stick with it. I'm using the Hero Arts Infinity Circle die sets and I'm just taking out three or four of kind of the smaller circles. Um, you can obviously make these whatever size you wish. If you have punches, then of course you could just quickly punch these out. But I'm going to be using a sheet of acetate to create my own stencil, particularly so I can use it again. However, if you just wanted to cut this out of cardstock, then that is going to work perfectly fine too. I do tend to add only around four or so ish circles to these sheets. These acetate sheets are the, I think they're five by six inches, and I just pop a little bit of low tech tape, a little bit of mint tape down to keep them on. I like to have them well spread out so that I give myself plenty of leeway when I am inking. So I know that it looks like they're kind of well spaced out, but this is a stencil, remember. And so if I have a bit more room, then it probably means less likely for me to go over the edge. Less likely, not perfect. Now these is, this is kind of where we're at. So I had my backgrounds, they are all perfectly nice and dry. With the pink one, I actually end up adding more color on top of that because it's just a little bit light for what we need. Although I do love the background that we created, Probably not just quite for this technique just yet. We have our stencil ready to go. And of course, I'm going to be using some white pigment ink. This is the Hero Arts uh, Unicorn Ink. And it's kind of my go-to one. Honestly, I've never had to find a different one because I love this one. And I am going to be using a finger dauber. Now, I'm going to start off here with the kind of darker blue one. You can see there's kind of strokes in there already. But I promise well, this is going to work out just fine. And this is just as easy as coloring in these circles. Now what I tend to do is I tend to come in first with not much white ink on my finger dauber. I don't want it to be fully loaded up and you'll see why in just a second. So once I add a little bit more ink, and then this is kind of the next layer, so to speak, of the bokeh dots. And I make sure this one is much heavier and it has more ink and it's definitely whiter. You could also do this with some acrylic paint or something like that, some white acrylic paint or some white gesso. Anything that you have in your stash is going to work. And I just rotate around all the different sizes of circles. 
Now, the bokeh technique is kind of a photography thing. It's like an out of focus background. And frankly, it makes a pretty cool background. And I think once these kind of all come together, they look pretty good as well. So there is no kind of special crazy technique to this. You are just adding in the dots. And then I kind of start at the biggest ones and I tend to get smaller and smaller, but no rhyme or reason. So you can see there's definitely some that kind of sink further into the background and some that I have added more ink and they kind of come to the foreground just a little bit. But once you think you have enough, then pop it to the side. Then, as I said, I added some more ink onto this pink one. I wanted a little bit more, a little bit darker background, but a little bit more interest. So you can see there is all sorts of splatters and I mean, this is just not a perfect background, but it works perfectly for this technique. So I come in with not too much ink on my finger dauber. I tend to not re-ink it. And then you'll see I eventually put it back into the ink and then I'm really going to layer it on to create some of the front circles. Make sure that they are overlapping each other. They can run into each other. They don't have to be all perfectly separate, just wherever and with all the different sizes of from at the stencil that we created. Now, I did get a lot of comments in my last few videos. I still have my cold that is hanging around at the moment. And it is winter, the middle of winter here in New Zealand. And it is a wet winter. We have had so much rain down the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. It is, we have barely seen the sun in the last few weeks. Um, and so, yeah, it is cold and very much winter. <laughs> so this cold is hanging around for me as well. Now here I'm going to start uh, adding a few bits and pieces to my cards. I am going to get some lawn fawn vellum because I know that I can heat emboss on this one. Now I ordered this Hero Arts, this is called Floral Silhouettes and I love these ones for things like uh, the stamp kissing technique and for kind of doing some ink blending with these ones so I'm excited to try that out but that will have to be in another video because for today I'm just going to add some embossing ink. I'm using the Maker Fort one here and I also purchased the re-inker for this as well. I must admit I haven't had to use it yet, this, became, this came nice and juicy and I really like this embossing ink pad. Um, I wasn't sure, I hadn't heard too much about them but I really like it, I really like the pad that it comes on, I like the shape of it, it's really nice and big, I like that it's not a rectangle honestly and I am, yeah so everything's going good so far, I've only had it I don't know a month or two so far um, so yeah I'm still in the trialing it out phase but I really like it for the minute then I'm going to fussy cut out my heat set image I just popped some white embossing powder on there and then I'm using my little cutter bee scissors to fussy cut around the edge I'm choosing to leave a little border for these and that way you can so you can kind of tell it's on vellum otherwise there's kind of very little point to popping it on there but it just felt like a nice kind of delicate background when I wanted to use the white embossing powder um, I thought that would work. Then I have the Vintage Artistry Essentials Square Stitched Frames. These are from 49 and Market. I've used these a few times in my videos. I love these kind of stitched newsprinty frames and I must admit this is something I have to encourage myself to use because I could happily hoard these. <laughs> now I have a little a get well soon stamp here and I have stamped this in a couple of different colors of blue ink just because I wasn't sure which one would be dark enough. This just says get well soon. Then I'm going to add my frame just a little bit off kilter. I did measure before I stamped to make sure that my little stamp would fit there in the corner and I will end up cutting off just just those two tiny little edges to kind of keep everything nice and flush. Then I'm going to tuck my gorgeous little flower just right in there and these cards are super super simple but I also don't want to cover up the whole background otherwise uh, there was no point in me doing it and I love that. It's not necessarily meant to be the star of the show but I like that it features. So I'm going to cut off these extra little bits just a tiny bit off the sides and that trims everything up. Then I'm going to pop this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. I fold all my bases myself. I cut them and fold just like I do my card fronts. And I use 110 pound Francheville paper, which is, in my opinion, I can't tell the difference between that and the Recollections brand one. I used to use Recollections uh, when I was able to get it here, but now I purchased the Frenchville one from Spotlight here in New Zealand. So that is card number one, and I'm going to keep the second one super simple, 
but I do really like this still. Now I have this fabric tape here, which I am loving using at the moment. This is relatively new for me. This is also from 49 and Market, and I just love the four designs that come in the box. This one is two inches wide, so it's pretty wide, and I just wanted that certain piece there. So the bit I'm going to cut off, I'm gonna pop that back on the roll so that I can use it again. This is obviously adhesive uh, backed, so I can pop this down onto my card. It is, I like one thing about it is that even these really wide bits, you are able to kind of put a little kind of snip and the fabric will tear nice and even without deforming the fabric. So without making kind of a crooked wavy edge, you can snip it and then pull. And then that way you can kind of custom the width of the tape without having to stick it down to another non-stick surface and kind of go down that route. So I really like this. I liked this over top of the bokeh background. I think that it covers up just enough but still leaves plenty in the background. I'm just going to pop the pieces over the side of the edges, but you could definitely cut them off too. And when I was embossing earlier on, I ended up doing two of those flowers, the silhouette flowers. I stamped and embossed two of them, so I had also fussy cut out both of them. So they're using the same kind of um, focal points for these two cards. I have created, I cut the bokeh uh, background down a little bit so that there would be a really nice bold border. Then I'm going to add a little bit of twine. This is actually burlap ribbon and I just kind of cut uh, one of the edges off and you can pull all the individual strings off. It just means I don't have to have both kinds of things in my little stash. And then I just created a little bow with a couple of the strings. I pop some foam tape on the back here. This will pop it up off my background. This one I'm actually not going to add a sentiment at all. I have been enjoying putting a few of these into my stash and given that my family raid my stash for all of their cards, I do find that these ones without sentiments go pretty fast. Um, they are saying that it just makes it really nice and easy to kind of send. You don't have to uh, think about the kind of the sentiment and whether it's appropriate quite so much. So I agree with that. I like them. So some of them in my stash seems to go down well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Everything will be linked down below in the supplies list. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.